Housing Commission, meeting of April 11th, 2019 to order. Um, before we get started, you know, I always try to bring some fun fact or sports fact before, and it is Pred season, so the, the hockey puck will drop, I think, Saturday at five o'clock, mm -hmm. is that right, Jeff? I don't know the answer to that question. But I think it's five o'clock, so um, we'll see you all at the game, I hope, so go Preds. All right. On to the agenda. So we need to adopt the agenda. Commissioners, the agenda was sent out prior to the meeting to you, and we'll need a motion to adopt. So moved. There's been a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. The agenda is adopted, and now we're on to the approval of the March 28th, 2019 minutes, and those were also sent to the commissioners prior to the meeting. Any additions or edits or anything? We'll need a motion to adopt the minutes. There's been a motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of the March 28th, 2019 meeting uh, minutes, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And now we're on to the recognition of the council members. I did not see any council members, so we'll call on them as they as we get to the items for items. All right, so we are now on to uh, item E, which is items for deferral withdrawal. Sean. So before we begin the items for deferral or withdrawal, as a note, um, for everyone watching, the Planning Commission meeting on April 25th coincides with the first day of the NFL draft. There are planned road closures in and around downtown. Um, the link on the screen is the best source of information about closures, and this link has also been made available on the Planning Department website under the meetings section. And so, Sean, before you get started, just if you would allow plenty of time to get here, we've already noticed this meeting, so we can't change the meeting or the date or the location. So we just wanted to let the commissioners and the viewing public um, to make sure that you get plenty of time to get here due to the road closures. Thank you. Great, great reminder. All right. Um, so items for deferral or withdrawal, beginning with item 1A on page 4 of your agenda, 2019 CP005001, the East Nashville Community Plan Amendment, which is a request to amend the East Nashville Community Plan for various properties along North 6th Street. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. In the associated case, item 1B on page 5 of your agenda, 2019Z004PR001, a request to rezone from SP to MUNA zoning for various properties along North 6th. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item 3, 2018SP029002, the 405 40th Avenue North SP amendment. The staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item 4, 2018SP057001, Eaton Creek Commons, a request to rezone from SP and RS15 to SP on Ashland City Highway. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item 5 on page 6 of your agenda, 2019 SP006001, the 3rd Avenue North SP, request to rezone from R6A to SP for various properties on 3rd Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item 6, 2019 SP 020001, the Pettis Road SP, request to rezone from AR2A to SP zoning for property on Pettis Road. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item 7, 2018 S 210-001, the Mosswood Lot 57 subdivision amendment. A request to amend previously platted setbacks for property on Reese Avenue. Staff recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Item 8, 2019S-032-001, resubdivision of part of lot 10 on the plan of Alpine Terrace subdivision. Request for final plat approval to create three lots. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. 
Item 11 on page 7 of your agenda, 2019Z044PR-001, request to rezone from RS5 to MUGA for property on Lishy Avenue. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Item 13, 2017 SP-092-001, the villages at Hodges Hill SP, request to rezone from RS20 to SP zoning for property at 4000 Brick Church Pike. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. And item 14, 2018 SP-013-001, the cottages at City Heights SP request to rezone from RS to SP zoning um, for properties on 27th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to defer to the April 25th Planning Commission meeting. Thank you, Sean. So, commissioners, I want to get these right. Um, make sure that we get these correct. <coughs> items for deferral withdrawal will be items 1A, 1B, 3. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 13, and 14. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, commissioners, you've heard those items. Is there a motion? It's a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and those items are deferred or withdrew. Now we're on to the consent agenda, which is item F. Sean? All right, um, before we begin, as information for our audience, if you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Planning Commission today, you may appeal the decision by petitioning for a writ of cert with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of entry of the Planning Commission's decision. To ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met, please be advised that you should contact independent legal counsel. Items on consent. Items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests um, that the item be removed from the consent agenda. And the items on the consent agenda begin with item 2A on page five of your agenda. 2019 CP-006-002, the Bellevue Community Plan Amendment, is a request to amend the Bellevue Community Plan by changing from T3 Neighborhood Maintenance to T3 Mixed Use Corridor Policy for a portion of property at 7315 Sonia Drive. Staff recommendation is to approve, and I would note that Commissioner Blackshear is recused from this item. The associated case, item 2B, also on page 5, 2019 SP-007-001, the Sonia Drive Mixed Use SP. A request to rezone from CL, CS, and R20 to SP zoning for various properties along Old Hickory Boulevard and Sonia Drive to permit 94 multifamily residential units, 18,000 square feet of non-residential uses, and a 170-bed hotel. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions if the associated plan amendment is approved. If the associated plan amendment is not approved, staff recommends disapproval. And I would note that Commissioner Blackshear is recused on this item. The next item is item 10 on page 7 of your agenda, 2018Z068PR001, request to rezone from RS5 to RM15A for property at 706 26th Avenue North. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item 12, 2009 SP-021-004, the Ruby SP amendment, a request to amend a specific plan for property located at 2411 Blakemore Avenue to add general office to the permitted uses. Staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. <coughs> Item 15 on page 8 of your agenda, 2019 SP-021-001, the Tulip Trace SP, a request to rezone from RS 7.5 to SP zoning for properties on Tulip Grove Road to permit 44 multifamily residential units and open space. The staff recommendation is to approve with conditions and disapprove without all conditions. Item 16, 2019 S057-001, Northview Homes, a request for final plat approval to create three lots on property located on Northview Avenue. The staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. 
Item 17, 124-78P-001, Sunrise Apartments Phase II Cancellation, a request to cancel a planned unit development on property located on Wallace Road. The staff recommendation is to approve. Item 18, 2005-UD-006-040, 3206 West End Circle, a request for modification to the standards of the 31st Avenue and Long Boulevard UDO on property located at 3206 West End Circle to permit the reduction of the front yard build two for various portions of the facade. The staff recommendation is to approve with conditions. Item 19, 2019Z 045PR-001, request to rezone from IR to MUNA zoning for property located at 747 Douglas Avenue. The staff recommendation is to approve. Item 21, 2019Z047PR-001, a request to rezone from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 2301 Alameda Street. Staff recommendation is to approve. Item 22, 2019Z049PR-001, a request to rezone from RS10 to R8A zoning for property located at 3107 River Drive. The staff recommendation is to approve. And under other business on page nine, item 26, accept the director's report and approve administrative items. Thank you, Sean. So the items for the consent agenda are items 2A, 2B, 10, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 22, and 26. That's right. That's correct. Okay. Commissioners, you've heard those items on the consent agenda. Is there a motion? There's a motion and a second. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it. And the consent agenda is adopted. And so that means that we are going to hear items number nine and number 20. Is that correct, Sean? Items nine and 20? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so that means that if you have any other items on the agenda, we've already taken care of those. I do appreciate everybody coming down. Um, and so we will start on item nine. And just for um, everybody, <coughs> We generally, so the process as it goes is we generally will have the uh, applicant speaks first and then we have the pros and the cons and then we save the end for the, the council member. So welcome council lady. I know you're new. I just wanted to make sure. Uh, appreciate you coming down. Okay. All right. Item nine. Item nine is a request for concept plan approval for properties located on Couchville Pike, just to the west of Bell Road. Staff is recommending approval with conditions. The site is approximately 17 acres, mostly vacant and open field. It's important to note that this is not a, that this is for a subdivision, it's not a zone change. Subdivisions are reviewed under existing zoning entitlements. The property is split zone with R15 and R20 would permit a maximum of 53 residential units. I'd also like to note that the maximum unit count in the staff report is incorrect. I think it said 60. The subdivision process cons consists of three steps, concept plan approval, which you're hearing tonight, final site plan, and final plat. This is a cluster lot subdivision. It does not allow more density than what would be permitted under the existing zoning. It allows in a reduction in lot size to work with topography and create open space. As proposed, this plan calls for a minimum 8,000 square foot lot. This is a proposed concept plan. It calls for a maximum of 50 residential units that consist of 41 lots and nine duplex lots. Lots range in size from 8,000 square feet to about 16,000 square feet. The duplex lots, which are identified with the red star, are a minimum of 15,000 square feet, which is consistent with uh, the zoning. They can't cluster down on two family. The open space that is proposed is 3.6 acres or 21% of the site. Access is from Couchville Pike. The plan also provides for future connections to the east, the west, and to the north. The plan provides sidewalks and planning strip consistent with the major and collector street plan and right-of-way dedications along Couchville Pike. Sidewalks along the internal streets are consistent with the local street standard. 
As proposed, the plan meets the subdivision regulations and the plan meets the cluster lot provisions of the zoning code. And therefore, staff is recommending approval with conditions. Thank you. We'll open this item for public hearing. Is the applicant in the room? And we appreciate you coming down. You have 10 minutes, and you can save two minutes, two of the 10 for rebuttal. Which I will do. We'll save two minutes. Uh, I'm Roy Dale with Dell & Associates, and I represent the applicant on this property. Uh, this land was actually purchased by my client. He wants to do affordable housing, but he wants to do it at low density. So it's only three units per acre. So these will be lo fairly large lots, probably for families. Uh, which will be unique for affordable housing. The area that's around it's highly undeveloped. It's, it's just a lot of area, open space. These properties and properties around it are mostly zoned R15. They were zoned R15 in 1974. Um, there's a lack of sewer in the area, and this, my client will be extending sewer to this property, and therefore he'll be able to develop it. Um, we previously had submitted a plan for a zone change on this property, where we had asked for 100 units, but uh, that just didn't work. We did a traffic study at the time based upon 100 units, and although we weren't required to do a new traffic study based upon 50 houses, we just revised it because we had the prior study. And so everything operates at a level of A or B. Um, at the intersection of Cowsville Pike in the future, you'll have delays no more than eight seconds. You're probably going to hear a lot about traffic. but. Um, as you'll find in areas that have not been developed, and you, I know you've seen this before, when people don't see any traffic at all, they sort of start freaking out because they think, you know, they're gonna get a lot more traffic. But there's very little traffic there. There is some truck traffic in the area because there's some industrial out there, and I think neighbors may think that that's a high volume of traffic, but based upon the traffic counts and the traffic study, it really is not. Um, this development has connectivity on all, to the north, south, east, and the west. It has large area for areas for stormwater management, and it has large open space areas in the middle and the, at the back of the subdivision because it's anticipated that families will be there and they'll want to use a lot of this open space for recreational purposes. Um, it is a zoned piece of property. We, the, this is on the last Planning Commission agenda. You had a new council member. I don't think she'd been sworn in yet. And she asked that this be deferred, so we deferred it, and we had a community meeting. Uh, there was a lot of misinformation, not her fault, uh, related at that meeting. And um, I think it's created a level of distrust, quite honestly, and you may hear that. Um, but this is a zoned piece of property. We're not requesting a zone change. Uh, I think it's in your requirements that you follow the subdivision regulations, and if it meets the regulations, you're supposed to recommend approval. The Planning Commission staff reviews this on your behalf to ensure to you that the requirements are met, and they're telling you <laughs> that they have been met. The different departments and agencies of Metro have looked at this from a standpoint of water, sewer, storm drainage, traffic, and all those departments have responded with a recommendation of approval as well. So um, that's pretty it, pretty simple, quite honestly. Um, you're in an area that hasn't seen much development, and th so I think there are people that are probably just full nervous. But again, this meets the policy, meets the, the uh, subdivision requirements, and um, planning is recommending approval, and I would hope that you would uh, endorse their approval. You want to speak? You want to speak? My name is Mohammed Shukri Hassan, and I'm uh, the applicant. Uh, I present Blue Town Development uh, that own the piece of land here, and I also happen to live just in the neighborhood, about a mile from this property. And I've been living there the past eight months, I mean, eight years. Um, with, with this, we have been waiting on this for almost a year. We purchased this piece of land last. I think April of April 10th of last year, that's when we closed on it. And we are told that we have to go through this process. And, you know, through Roy and other people, uh, we filed for rezoning up to, we're supposed to get this property rezoned, as, rezoned to get more unit for families on it. And then we are told that I think around December, we decided that just to kind of get the concept plan as it is, what it allows, what the laws allows on it. Um, everything goes, was going well. Um, we ran into unfortunate circumstances where, and it happens in every pocket of this county, where a previous council person went to another office and the, the neighborhood, the district, was just sitting there with nobody help, helping us in this process. Uh, Councilman Large Bob Mendez was very helpful in that process, and he made clear that Yet, as it is, he'll, he'll be a bit supportive of it with the neighborhood help. 
Uh, so we kind of hold off for this last election to happen to, for the place to fill up, and we communicated with uh, our new council person there. Uh, so I will request as an applicant that for you guys to apply this for us, and I would like to kind of submit that this is also community owned land trust, um, the, the kind of first of its kind in this town. So uh, as an applicant, I would love for you guys to support our application. Thank you. And we'll reserve anything else. We'll reserve two minutes <coughs> for rebuttal. Uh, in, before we start the uh, hearing, just a reminder, everybody needs to be very professional. No personal comments or anything like that. So we get, you get two minutes uh, to speak. And anyone um, speaking in favor, you can come forward. Seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Come on up. You guys can line up. And we appreciate you coming down and then just state your name and address for the record. We appreciate it. I'm Clay Faircloth, 2578 Pulley Road, uh, 37214. Uh, our land uh, property, Pulley Road, runs parallel to Couchville Pike. In 1974, when this land was rezoned to R15, Nashville had one skyscraper, the LNC Tower. We've got numerous skyscrapers now, lots of traffic. <coughs> our biggest concern in the community, and, and we're really wanting to be good neighbors to our, our folks that bought the property, but I feel like they got hoodwinked on it. So what happened, uh, you have three entrances to this area. You have Pleasant Hill and Bell Road, you have Couchville Pike and Bell Road, and you have Knapp Boulevard and Couchville Pike. That's the only three ways in and out of this property. The traffic on Bell Road is horrendous. There's no way to get in and out now, much less adding 53 units Two cars per unit, you're looking at 100 cars. You're looking at school children, school buses. The airport has been running an industrial uh, uh, project there, building a new runway for the last probably 10 years. And there are hundreds and hundreds of dump trucks that come down from Nat Boulevard down Couchville Pike and turn left onto Pulley Road. Now that doesn't affect this property per se because it doesn't go past that property, but these children go past that property. These people will be driving past, going up through this area where all this traffic is. There's also three trucking firms on Couchville Pike before you reach this proposed development. The Harding Place extension will go through right next to this property. The property value at that time will drop tremendously when you put a four-lane highway right next to that. And the quality of life that these people are seeking for their community is not going to be existent when that road goes through there. Now, I know that road's been planned for years, and it's not there now. So what we're asking for is, A, is looking at the zoning to begin with. It should have never been changed like that. or looking at the usage of the land, you've got industrial and you've got high density residential in that same DC3 uh, thing there. And so you need to look at those situations and the traffic, traffic Thank lights, you. Thank you, things of that nature. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Come on up. Hey guys. Welcome. Wes Stevens, 2505 Pulley Road. We are the Two lots, Jason, right behind the property, and I think Mr. Dale was right about, you know, misinformation and some questions. The only questions I have are, you know, there's a 20-foot landscaping barrier on both sides, nothing on the back to our property. We run cattle on our property, electric fences. Safety is my first concern. There is a little bit of dip in the back of the property where a little bit of barrier, I think. Uh, the other concern I had, especially about misinformation they said earlier about low cost housing, low cost housing, which is great. Nashville needs more of that. But Mr. Dale said the other day in the meeting that all this property was already bought. Nobody could <coughs> buy it. It was only for a certain group of people. I guess I was kind of wondering, you know, what that was if they were building this low cost housing, but there was no way to afford, no way to buy into this housing. It was kind of confusing to me. That was a question. The other was the traffic, of course. There's you can't get out of there from four to six every day. Was there, I know there was a traffic study done, but was there any study done outside of the entrance, outside of the just getting into the property? That was, that's all I had. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else wishing to speak in opposition? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll do the rebuttal and then the council lady. <coughs> rebuttal. That threw me off. <laughs> Uh, Jason, could you do you have a slide that shows the the open space in the back? Uh, one of the 
<clears throat> one of the people that just spoke was concerned about a 20-foot buffer, but along the back, those may look like two large parcels, but it's actually a large, there are two large buffers. It's open space back there, and so they're probably, it's probably 100 feet wide, and I think that might answer his question and make him feel better. Um, I know there's some frustration about the current zoning on the property. It happened in 1974. This is not to review zoning. This is existing zoning. It's an area that has that is not developed. This is uh, in an area that probably sees very little traffic in all purposes. It's like rural property. And so, you know, people are obviously alarmed when they see a little increase of traffic. But this meets all the requirements of Metro. It didn't even require a traffic study. But we did one anyway to show that this operates at a level of A service. Um, so uh, it does meet the subdivision requirements again. I want to beat that dead horse. Um, and um, for all the purposes that you review a plan by, if it meets those requirements, you're supposed to recommend approval. And this certainly does that. We did have a meeting. Uh, the meeting was probably attended by 30 people. <coughs> I really expected more people, quite honestly. So um, there was another question that he asked about the housing, about buy-in or something. What I was trying to tell him, when, when people ask me when I come with the subdivision to what the square footage is going to be and how much they're going to cost, I can't really answer that question because it's just a subdivision. There is no way that you can enforce what's built within a subdivision on a zoned property. And but I try to answer that question as honestly as I can. And we do have a client here, and it is his mission to build affordable houses. And that's the only assurance that I could give. So I hope that that answers your questions, and I hope you'll follow the staff's recommendation and recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Councilor Porterfield, come on up. Welcome. Thank you all so much uh, for this opportunity, and also uh, thank you for the opportunity two weeks ago prior to me being sworn in. Um, we did have a community meeting. The meeting was attended by roughly 40 individuals that live uh, between District 29 and District 13. This property is very close to the barrier of District 13, and a lot of the concerns were from neighbors in that particular district, so we wanted to make sure to open up the meeting to all of the surrounding area. Um, the majority of the people in attendance for the meeting were not in favor of the project. Uh, there were some people that were neutral on the project. One person came to me after the meeting and said that they would be in favor of the project, but they did not speak out during the course of the meeting. Um, some of the concerns were, were that um, it is an industrial area. There were concerns about the future of the area. If a residential um, subdivision is built currently, will that mean that more residential properties will be coming to this area? There were a lot of concerns regarding the traffic with there uh, not being a, a light on um, Bell and Couchville Pike and the difficulty in navigating uh, that particular area. Um, there were safety concerns. It is a two-lane road. The, the project is at the top of a hill. So there were a lot of concerns with residents coming in and out of the new subdivision uh, if the people coming up the hill would be able to see them. Uh, concerns about school buses on the property, is, uh, on the, the Couchwood Pike as well. Um, Another concern is that it is in an employment development center, and a lot of the residents that came to the meeting did not feel that a residential area would align with an, uh, being in an employment development center. There were also concerns about future zoning. Some of the surrounding properties uh, will be requesting to have their property zoned industrial in the future, so they had concerns that this could potentially impact uh, their, their projects um, as well as their property <coughs> value. Um, I received two emails about the project that were not in favor of the project. Um, in those emails, there were concerns about a possible sinkhole in the area, and there were also concerns about the hard in place extension and if this property um, will impact the hard in place extension and the uh, exit room for, for that particular project. Uh, the last concern was that the north entrance would potentially be going through Mr. Steven, Stevens' property and uh, could be impacting Pulley Road. Um, again, I, I did ask the, the property owner to defer that meeting two weeks ago, to defer that two weeks ago, to give the community the, the opportunity to ask some of the questions that they had to, um, that they had about the particular project. And um, Mr. Dale did come to represent the, the project to answer some questions. Uh, there still was misinformation in the meeting, so some of the residents did not get all of the information that they were requesting. Uh, but the information that has been relayed to me is that the community has not been in favor of 
of that. Um, now, uh, Mr. Shukri is also a District 29 resident. He's obviously in favor of the project as the owner of the property. So again, I just wanted to come and share with you all the concerns of the constituents of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Council Lee. We appreciate it. Uh, seeing no one else wishing to speak, we'll declare the public hearing closed. Commissioner Haynes, you want to go first? Um, I think this meets all the regulations. I'm going to support staff's recommendation. Commissioner Gobble? I agree. Commissioner Moore? I agree, but I appreciate the deferral and the um, intention of meeting with the community um, per the council lady's request. Councilman? So I, I just wondered if uh, at the meeting uh, people understood that the subdivision regulation um, kind of narrows very much what, um, how much can be done to, to, I mean, we are basically bound to pretty much accept this uh, request. I wonder if the miscommunication, can I ask Mr. Dale to come back? Is that Absolutely. Okay? Or, the, or the council lady? Yeah. We did have uh, the council representative, Matt from Plan, that, that works with the planning issues with our council. He was there. He explained multiple times um, that if the requirements are met, it will be approved that this was a, the state requirements for a subdivision. Uh, we did express that in the meeting. It was also expressed in the information that was put out on Facebook. I don't think that people understood that necessarily, but it was expressed multiple times that if they met the criteria, that it would be approved. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. So I'm, I'm going to support it, uh, uh, but I, I think uh, we can never do enough to explain to people that although we want to work with them, uh, we are bound by law, and in some cases we just have to do what we have to do. So, uh, so I'm going to vote in support of it. Commissioner Hill. I would concur. It's pretty straightforward. And vote to approve. Commissioner Blackshear. Could the staff explain, um, <clears throat> not only for, I guess, the newer commissioners, but also for um, the neighbors in attendance, what the criteria are that a subdivision for a concept plan must meet in order to be approved? Sure. So state law charges the Planning Commission with adopting subdivision regulations that govern the creation of new lots within lands. So the subdivision regulations are going to outline, um, outline the requirements for um, roads, lot configuration, um, if there are any environmentally sensitive areas, how those are treated. Um, it's all a really technical review in regards to how land is divided. So it's essentially creating new legal divisions of land. Um, in this case, the, the subdivision regulations, there are a couple of different sections. We have conventional subdivision regulations and then the rural subdivision regulations. In this case, the subdivision was re reviewed against the conventional regulations regulations um, and found to meet all of those. So when the neighbors are talking about the traffic problems, and I know that in the traffic and parking recommendations, there are conditions that would have to be accepted for them to approve. Does that go into the, the um, I guess, the meeting of the criteria for the subdivision regulations? Correct. So um, in regards to traffic studies being required, there's generally a threshold um, under which traffic studies would be required, and it's usually 75 lots. And so this would not typically even trigger a traffic study, but the developer kind of went a step further and went ahead and did that study in concert with um, the Public Works Department. And so Public Works would review that traffic study and incorporate any needed in requirements into the conditions of approval. Okay. So the, the conditions that are included in the traffic and parking recommendations, which, I mean, they look to be kind of extensive. I'm not sure if the neighbors had a chance to look at those conditions yet, but if um, the commission were to approve um, the concept plan, then we would also be requiring these conditions be met? Yeah, you'll see condition number three under staff's recommendation of conditions is to comply with all conditions and requirements of metro agencies. And so that would tie in those uh, required traffic improvements. Into that, when we review subsequent phases, Public Works is involved with that and they make sure that the standards are met. Vice Chair? Um, 
I like it when subdivisions are relatively straightforward. Um, so I, I concur with staff recommendation. And I just wanted to note, um, I know this doesn't factor into our decision making, but the applicant mentioned that this was a uh, property that would be placed in a community land trust, which is a important new tool that Nashville is exploring to preserve, have long-term affordable housing. Um, so I applaud the applicant for giving that a try. I think it's a very important um, project to see and see how it goes. Um, but I agree with staff's recommendation, and I'll make a motion that we approve um, with all conditions. And that's a proper motion. Is there a second? And a second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and it's adopted with conditions. We are on now on to All right, we're on item 20. <clears throat> item number 20 is a zone change request to change zoning from R6, which is one and two family residential, to RM15A, which is a multifamily residential district. The properties are highlighted in red. This is a located along um, JJ Watson, just west of Nolensville Pike. Staff's recommendation is disapprove. A little history. In May of 2018, the application originally requested a zone change for the same properties, but the zone change from one and two family residential R6 to multifamily residential RM20A. At that time, staff also recommended disapproval. The applicant deferred indefinitely, and there was no public hearing. The application was reactivated and is now requesting a zone change from R6 to RM15A instead of the previously requested RM20A zoning. Current zoning is R6. R6 zoning is to the north, to the east, and to the south, a portion of the west. To the northwest, there is RM15 zoning. The policy is conservation and T3 suburban neighborhood evolving. The neighborhood evolving policy is intended to enhance suburban residential neighborhoods with more housing choice, vehicular connectivity, and moderate density. RM15A zoning would permit up to 69 units. The intensity and type of de development permitted by RM15A is out of character with the surrounding area, which consists mostly of one-story single-family homes. The properties requested to be rezoned, which are highlighted here in red, are locate, located excuse me, along J.J. Watson Avenue. Um, they are on a dead end street, which is predominantly single family um, within the broader neighborhood west of Nolensville Pike. J.J. Watson Avenue is not built to Metro Public Works standards for a local road. This is approximately 650 feet west of Nolensville Pike. Additional density is important to support the corridor. However, high density should be placed closer to the corridor and not leapfrog a single family residential area on a dead end street. The requested zone change is not consistent with the policy at this location. Therefore, staff recommends disapproval. Thank you. We'll open this item for public hearing. Is the applicant? I'm not speaking. That's good. Here. Is there? All right. Um, I'm Roy Dale, Delano Associates. Uh, this is a matter that's occurring in council members of Blaylock, Blaylock's district. She's handling this. She's going to handle this on the council level. I think she called staff today. She said, look, y'all make a recommendation. It doesn't, I'm not telling you what to do, <laughs> um, but, but she's going to basically handle it on a council level. That's what she's going to do. So you can, however staff's making a recommendation for it, she's fine with it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank All right. you. Anyone wishing to speak in support? Anyone wishing, seeing none, anyone wishing to speak in opposition? Seeing none, I declare the public hearing closed. And Vice Chair, you want to go first? 
Um, sure. Uh, <laughs> or make a motion to disapprove. Um, I, I'm happy to make a motion if there is not other commentary. I, I did want to make one kind of, I guess, point of personal. I really like this write-up for some reason. I thought you did a really nice job of explaining how the density should work uh, for those of us that sometimes want to play on the gray area. This was a very clearly done right up, so thank you. Um, oh. And, and with that, uh, I'm happy to make a motion to approve Well, let's, let's make sure that, uh, does anybody else wish to speak, any other commissioners wish to speak, or it's okay for a motion? All right, yeah, why don't you make a motion? All right, sure. I will make a motion to, to approve staff's recommendation to disapprove this project. As That's a proper motion. Is second. there a second? And a second. Any other discussion? Councilman. Do we have any uh, messages or emails or letters from the council <coughs> member? No. So, okay, thank you. So we are back to the motion, and the motion is to disapprove. All in favor of disapproval, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Ayes have it, and it's disapproved. We are on to other business. Nothing on historic uh, parks. Any update on parks? No report. Nope. Executive committee. We don't have a. We don't have an update. Oh, yes. We will do that in the director's report. Yes. Yes. So we are on to that. Anything else, Vice Chair? Okay. Director's report. Thank you. Uh, so we've invited you to an executive session on. Uh, a work session, not executive session, a work session on April the 23rd at 1130 pertaining to our subdivision regulations. We're bringing in um, an outside expert who has worked in that space at the state level as well. So we thought it would be useful to hear from his perspective um, about how, what state law anticipates and how that relates to our own work. Specifically, I've asked him to address some issues around public engagement and how we think about that in the context of subregs. So thank you very much. Excellent. Lunch, lunch will be served, so we expect every commissioner to be there. Yes. All right, be there. good. Be there, be square. Anything on council level? Any updates? Council? No. No? Okay. Council member Hall is in the back. Council member Hall, you would, I'm so glad you're here. Which, which, we have finished every item, but we'd love for you to, if you would like to come and speak and be part of our group. He just wanted to be. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just in class. I'm one of those that never feel like you can learn enough, and because so much is shifting and constantly changing in the city with the things you guys are dealing with and what we deal with at council, it never hurts to be here even when you don't have to so that you can look at how different things are being applied. And so I'm just, you know, taking notes. I love that. That's so great. <laughs> Thank you for Thanks. coming down, council. Appreciate it. Seeing no other business, is there a motion to adjourn? We're adjourned. <laughs> this has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.